One way I like to start off this semester is by talking about characteristics of living things or what make us alive. Um, this is biology. So we're talking about um, the, the study of, of living organisms, okay? Bio meaning life. This is the study of life. Um, so I like to talk about what characteristics living things possess as opposed to non-living things because sometimes there are misconceptions that um, you know water is living or that lightning is living and, and those those are um, actually um, not non-living or abiotic um, factors so moving on okay so signs of life there are there are, um, some signs of life one is that they're made up of one or more cells okay living things are always made up of one or more cells okay the basic unit of a living thing is a cell um, you can break that on down further to atoms and molecules and things like that but once you get past that level to atoms and molecules we're no longer talking about a living organism. Two, they're based on a universal genetic code, okay? So all living things have a genetic code. And when we talk about that genetic code, we're talking about DNA and we're talking about RNA. Um, some organisms do not possess both. All organisms reproduce, okay? Um, because living organisms come from living organisms. They have a limited lifespan. Living organisms are not going to be around for um, an unlimited amount of time, like water. Water keeps cycling through and through and through um, the water cycle, and it's been here for, you know, thousands, millions of years on Earth, whereas a tiger is going to um, have a limited lifespan. All living organisms grow. Living organisms uh, grow. So um, if, you, if you really think about it, you know, babies come from two cells and then they grow into this um, you know adult we and, and just like seeds mature into trees signs of life they respond to changes in their environment um, now this could be simply as you being in you know a classroom or um, a uh, outside I know it's very cold these days and and needing to put on a jacket or an extra layer you're responding to a change in your environment it's colder it's getting colder so you're putting on a jacket or maybe um, your uh, you, you know you get cold all of a sudden you get all these goosebumps or you start shaking to um, raise your body temperature that's a response to your environment this is showing you right here this plant is moving towards the sun so um, it's actually um, responding to a stimulus when the sun moves so does so does it interesting enough if you go through if you're like going through a um, hike in the woods and you look up you might see some trees tilted towards the sun so that they can get the available sunlight because they have all these other trees that are growing and blocking their sunlight they'll move to actually get that sunlight all living organisms use energy okay how they obtain that energy is very different but they all use energy and all living organisms evolve or change over time 
Okay, so non-living things may show one or few of these characteristics, but not all of them. Like, for example, I've had students say, um, well, a fire grows, yeah, but a f and, and a fire will reproduce from another fire, but does a fire change over time, or does a fire um, have a genetic code? Is a fire made up of cells? And, and those things are, you know, you would answer no to. Okay, so cells, just, you know, briefly talking about cells. All living things are made up of cells. Cells are the smallest units of an organism that can be considered alive. Unicellular or single celled, or they can be multicellular, which means that they have many cells. A genetic code. Offsprings usually resemble their off their parents. So when we talk about um, the genetic code, you know we're talking about DNA, we're talking about RNA. When we have um, asexual reproduction, which means if you have an A on there, that means that you're going to have um, this is without sex. So that means that it only has one parent. You'll see this in bacteria and jellyfish. Um, in bacteria, they can simply just break in half through um, asexual reproduction. And what that means is they both have the same DNA, okay? It wasn't a mixture of two DNAs coming together. So they're going to have the same traits. They're not going to have any differences. So with sexual reproduction, we're taking two organisms DNA and, and, and they combine and you're going to see different traits and you're going to see genetic variety. Reproduction. Reproduction. Organisms produce new organisms of their own kind. Um, so just like we we're talking about before asexual reproduction is when we have like a single individual produces an offspring identical to the parent. We have sexual. We have two parents that produce offspring that are the same from each parent. Growth and development. Growth means to increase in size. Development, organisms change as their life cycle progresses. Um, an example, as we get older, our bodies change. Response to the environment. Organisms live in constantly changing environments. Variables such as temperature and amount of light from day to day and season to season. All living things are able to respond to those changes in their environment. And when we talk about this, um, we talk about homeostasis, um, and that's just, you know, an internal balance. And all organisms um, like to have that homeostasis. So they will do different things um, to maintain that homeostasis. For example, like I said before, when it's cold outside, our bodies are going to shiver. Our bodies are going to create goosebumps. And this is our body's response to help us raise our body temperature. Needs for materials and energy. All organisms need material and energy in order to grow, develop, and reproduce. Um, we, you know, we eat we drink water, we need these things to be able to grow, develop, and reproduce. Um, bacteria, they don't necessarily eat like we eat, but they do absorb um, materials to help them produce energy um, and, and grow and develop. Metabolism, when we talk about metabolism, it's all the chemical reactions that take place within a cell of living things. It's very important includes a wide variety of processes. Evolution. Basic traits are inherited from parents. Uh, they do not change throughout a lifetime. The species as a whole, however, does change over long periods of time, and this change over time is called evolution. Maintaining internal balance, and this goes back to the organisms responding to their environment and like I said before homeostasis is a process by which organisms keep their internal conditions 
relatively stable. For example, human temperature is a 98.6. And like I just said, we shiver, we create goosebumps to, to keep it that 98.6. Now, um, when we talk about, you know, snakes, <clears throat> they... Um, they do not have a lot of control over their body temperature. It changes with the environment. So a lot of times you'll see them burrow into the ground when, when it's too hot or too cold. Okay, so that concludes the PowerPoint. Hopefully you've uh, gained two things from this. One, um, you know what the eight characteristics of life are. Okay. Two, you know that each living organism has to, has to possess all eight of those characteristics to be considered living. If they do not possess all eight of those characteristics, that organism is considered non-living. Now your task is to go through this PowerPoint slide, PowerPoint presentation, and um, I want you to um, label each of the organisms as living or non-living, such as this tree, would it be living or non-living? Apple, living or non-living? And uh, you'll go through and um, Label each one of these as living or non-living. Uh, two things that you need to remember is biotic means alive, while abiotic means not alive. If you'll look, we have that A there. A means without, so abiotic means without life, whereas biotic means with life. And like I was telling you before, bio means life.